Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math, and today we are going to finish our discussion about circles. This is part two of a two-part series. Today we'll be looking at the area of a circle. In the previous video, we took measurements of the circumference and the diameter of various household circles. Today we're going to use those measurements to look at the area. So first, so first, I have another data table that you can create. Four columns again. First column is the object. Second column is going to be the estimate of the area. The third is the radius of the object. And the fourth is the actual area according to our measurements. So what you could do is use your previous data table and transfer over the names of the objects onto your new data table. And then let me show you a tip about estimating the area of a circle. Suppose I wanted to estimate the area of the black circle with the area being the shaded region inside of the black circle. Whenever you estimate, you do as minimum calculations as possible using the easiest techniques. And it's pretty easy to find the area of a square. It's just side times side or side square. The area of the purple square is obviously smaller than the area of the circle, while the area of the green square is obviously bigger than the area of the circle. If the purple square is a lower estimate of the area, and the area of the green square is an upper estimate of the area, that means that the area of the circle must be somewhere in between them. So if I was to take the average of those two areas, that would be a pretty good estimate, I think. This purple square has a side of 4.75, and this green square has a side of 6.75. So the area of the green square is about 45 inches squared, and the area of the purple square is about 22 inches squared. If I average those together, I get an area of about 34. Now you don't add you don't have to do detailed calculations for each of your circles. Now you don't have to do detailed calculations because then what's the point of an estimate? But use this knowledge to write down estimates of your circles in your data table. Go ahead and pause the video and try that on your own. Let's see how good your estimates are. Now in order to do that, I need to actually calculate the area of all those circles, which means I need to know the formula for the area. So let's take a look at this circle. I've divided the circle into four equal sections with a solid line. Then I divided each of those sections in half with a thick dotted line. Then I divided each of those sections in half with a thin dotted line. In a second, I'm going to cut the circle along the solid line. When I do, the area of the circle does not change. Even though it's in four pieces, if I put those four pieces together in any pattern, it has the same area. The area doesn't change. So let's do that. I'm going to cut the circle into four equal pieces. So here's the circle cut into four equal pieces. Like I said, the area has not changed. It has not gotten bigger, has not gotten smaller. I'm going to rearrange these in a certain way. How would you describe this shape? Do you have a name for it? Yeah, there's not really a name for it. Like I would maybe call it a scallop or something like that, but there's nothing really fancy about this. It's, if I said calculate the area of this, you'd be like, I don't even know where to start. Let's do this process again. I'm going to cut each of these pieces in half along that thick dotted line. Here's our circle cut into eight equal pieces. Remember, it's the exact same area, it's just cut apart. Now let's take these pieces and arrange them in the pattern we saw previously. Alright, what do you see now? Is this shape starting to look like something? You blurred your vision just slightly. Does it start looking like a shape that you know? It should look a little bit like a parallelogram. We have a base and we have a height. Now granted this base is a little scalloped, but we do have that height. Let's think about that height. What is that height? That height is just the radius. You can see the dotted lines on each of these pieces, which are the radii. So the height of this shape is the radius. What's this base? Well, the outside of the circle is what? The circumference. And so, remember, this part is the outside of the circle, but half of it. So this is actually half of the circumference. So we have half of a circumference times the height, if this is a parallelogram, should give us the area, right? 
Let's do this process one more time, and I'm going to cut each of these pieces on that dotted line. So here's our circle cut into 16 equal pieces. Again, the area of those pieces added together is the area of our original circle. Let's rearrange the pieces like we've been doing. All right, now it really looks like a parallelogram. Each of these pieces still are sectors. Each of these sides still are arcs, but it's almost straight enough that you can see that this is basically a par parallelogram. If I was to keep cutting these pieces in half and half and half and half and half, in theory, this edge is basically gonna then really truly become, become straight and then it would be a parallelogram, or really at that point, practically almost a rectangle. So to reiterate, the base of this parallelogram is one half the circumference, and the height is the radius. And you calculate area of a parallelogram by multiplying the base times the height, so half the circumference times the height will give us our area. So if two pi r is my circumference, if I half two pi r, I just have pi r. So let me fold this back. So the base of that parallelogram is pi r. The height of that parallelogram is r. So if I multiply those together, I get pi r times r, or pi r squared. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. So now that we know that area equals pi r squared, we can find the actual area. So I went ahead and completed my data table. I found the radius for each of my objects. To do that, I just took the diameter from my previous data table and just halved it. Because remember, the diameter is two times the radius, or two radii. And then I just use the formula to calculate the area, pi times radius squared. So I have an inch here, and so now this is gonna be inches squared, because that's inch times inch when you square that radius. So the radius of my wedding ring is 0.4375 inches. When I do pi times 0.375 squared, I get 0.6013 inches squared. If you, made, if you made estimates, you'll be able to compare your estimates to the actual area. To do that, it'll help verify your estimating skills, but also, by calculating these estimates, this actually helps verify the formula that we just found. This estimate should be pretty close if you actually calculated a maximum area square and a minimum area square and averaged those together. So you should have a realistic estimate, and then our formula should be pretty close, and that formula is actually the actual area. I hope these two videos help you understand pi, circumference, and area a little bit better.